little spliff from down under. So we're at uh, part three now of the freehand grinding. I'm going to go more deeply into grinding and lapping drills. And um, this is a really interesting subject. Um, I, I hope to do some more uh, videos on the subject of freehand grinding. Maybe we can do one on grinding taps and uh, other tools later on. I'll get on with it. Cheers. Okay, in part one we did a general introduction to drill sharpening, freehand drill sharpening. And um, hopefully I've got your attention and now I can go a little bit deeper. Um, e even if you buy a new drill or you have a drill doctor or you have a drill grinding attachment, you still need to understand what's critical in a drill so that you can check it that it is correct. Um, even a new drill can be faulty or a drill that you've ground with an attachment can be faulty. So you need to be able to check it. So you can use a gauge like this to measure the angle and whether or not the point is central. Uh, you can use a gauge like this to measure the angle and whether or not the point is central. Um, but the key thing here is that the angle, and typically it's 59 degrees a side or 118 degrees, the actual angle is not super critical. What matters is that the angle is the same on one side to the other side. And so what you're looking for is two key things, that the angle is the same and that the center of the drill is in the middle. And you can measure it quite accurately by rotating it in a gauge. Because remember, if it's slightly below the line one way and above the line the other way, it's double the amount off center. And it's that sort of accuracy you need to obtain. Whether you're freehand grinding or whether you're checking a new drill, don't assume it's right. Um, or if you've got an attachment. So check the angle and how central it is. And this, this is the same drill um, I used in the part one uh, introduction. And you can see it's pretty close. And it needs to be really central if you want to drill an accurate hole that is to size. Another way you can measure it is with a little depth gauge like this. And you want to measure from the outer diameter of the flute to the center point between one side and the other. And there you can see off center. A tiny amount. Um, but we can improve on that. So I'll go into grinding now. Okay, let's get to the grinding stage. Something I've just been thinking about, I didn't emphasize enough in the last video, that the corners of the wheel must be sharp. Um, if they're not sharp like this, it's a sign that you're breaking the corner. For example, you never want to grind on the corner of a wheel like that, because you'll just radius the, the wheel. The, the corner of the wheel is very fragile and it'll break down really easily. If it's diamond dressed and sharp, you should be able to maintain a sharp edge because you need a sharp edge for certain key jobs like uh, split point grinding and so on. So your wheel must always be sharp and diamond dressed. Okay, let's go into grinding it now. Now I've marked this with a felt pen showing the side that needs a couple more thou ground off it. And um, I don't normally mark it because you can just put your finger on it and remember it. But for the purpose of filming, I've just marked it. Now, I'll, I'll switch the grinder on in a minute. But what you've got to do is settle in to that flat on there and grind a tiny amount off. So we, we need really good light. Um, we need to hold it in the flutes accurately. And we need to control the rotary position so, so that the uh, flute surface is level and we need to control the angle and we need to control the clearance angle. And just move in slightly, coming in from behind until we can juggle into it and then move lengthwise. That way we're wearing the wheel evenly and grinding the drill evenly. Okay, let's switch it on. I 
little bit too shy of the cutting edge there. And that's better. And now we can check it and we are closer to central. Now that will be a really accurate drill and as long as we thin the web down past the center line um, evenly and we have the right amount of clearance. I know it sounds like a lot um, but you find after you've done it for a while uh, it'll get easier and there isn't really any way to avoid it because you still need, even if you say, oh, I'm not going to learn that skull, you still need to check a new drill or a drill that you've ground with an attachment to make sure it's okay. You really do need to understand this if you're going to do um, precision drilling work. Drills down to about 1.5 millimeters diameter you can grind with a diamond dressed bench grinder freehand quite accurately as long as you've got good light and magnifying binoculars strapped over the top of your head um, between 1.5 and right on up I mean this is my biggest drill that I've got anyway it's a 40 what is it 46 millimeters but tiny little drills and they go right down to a few thou diameter this drill for example is a 0.3 diameter drills around that size and you know around the range from 1.5 down to 0.3 I think you better to diamond lap those um, and maybe I'll just quickly show you that okay let's just go quickly into diamond lapping um, I don't want to get too deeply into it at this sort of introductory stage but use a uh, very fine lap for example, I'm using an easy lap super fine here, and I use a bigger drill than you'd normally diamond lap. You'd probably only diamond lap a drill smaller than 1.5 diameter. This is about a 3 millimeter diameter drill. If I can get the light right on there. So the same principle as bench grinding, but you've just got a much slower cutting action. Um, good light, good magnification. And then you just rotate it. So you've got it on a little against a little step on your vise, for example. And you can see the little shavings of high-speed steel fluff dust coming up onto the front rake when the uh, lap is breaking into the cutting edge. And then you're just inspecting it really closely with your angle gauge until you've got it really central. And you can also use this process to finish lap um, a larger drill that you want uh, to be really accurate and give a really good finish. Okay, let's look at web thinning and split point for a minute. So web thinning, what I'm referring to there, is removing that bulk of material from the uh, web of the drill and effectively extending the length of the flute cutting surface so instead of the flute cutting surface ending here it carries on further across to the center of the drill so you're you're grinding away this portion here now web thinning like that is very practical to do on an offhand grinder and it allows you to sharpen the whole edge again and again and because it's sort of a progressive shape and it allows you to go deeper and deeper and as, as you grind this surface this one becomes less so it's a kind of a recoverable shape if you like so that's what you'd call conventional web thinning and that's a little bit different from a split point a split point is also web thinning but it's a particular type of shape whereby it's coming in at a different angle and you've got a much uh, sharper uh, more critical shape to the web thinning and that is very difficult to do freehand um, you need a very sharp cornered wheel 
and I wouldn't encourage beginners to grind this type of split point because it, it has to be very accurate. It's very easy to go too far. It's more practical to do this type of web thinning which is a continuation of the flute surface. A bit further through you've still got a bulk of metal here but you thin the web down like that. Okay let's look at grinding the web again now. So that face there is parallel to the back of the wheel, side of the wheel, but backed off a little bit further. Okay, let's switch it on now. We're coming in there and then we're moving, I'm exaggerating it here, we're coming in there and we're moving Alright, so we're going in like that and we're moving that way. Okay, that's probably more than enough for that video on grinding and lapping drills. I'm trying to keep it concise to hold your attention. I really appreciate you following me on this. It's something I'm really passionate about, as you can probably tell. Um, it's always a, 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 a challenge to be both concise and yet cover all the material. Um, I, I, I always fear that I'm missing key points. And then I want to go more deeply into that. But I know I'll lose your attention if I get off into tangents and waffle for too long. So it's, it's a fine balance. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah.